In this lecture, we'll move on to look at structural abnormalities of the autosomes. To begin, let's look at how some of those abnormalities happen. We should be pretty familiar with the fact that there could be duplications of regions of the chromosome, as well as deletions of regions of the chromosome. And we have also seen that this could happen through translocations, exchange of pieces between chromosomes. Now, let's introduce some new terminology. How do we express? We've talked about the Goldilocks principle with a large bowl, a small bowl, and just the right amount. Uh, Overexpression is when we have too much. That's clear. And then there's another term, haploinsufficiency, means having half of the genetic information that one should. And although this can happen in uh, chromosomal, whole chromosomal deletions or additions, aneuploides and polyploides, we can also see overexpression or haploinsufficiency for genes encoded within uh, the deleted or duplicated or translocated sections. So, um, let's look at first a deletion situation. Cri du chat is uh, a condition that you'll be required to know. And Cri du chat gets its name because it has uh, uh, people that are suffering from it have a specific cat-like cry. And uh, obviously that's how it got its name. And it results from a deletion in the short arm uh, P region of chromosome 5. So we call that 5P. And you can see the megabase numbers indicated there. You don't need to know those specifically. Uh, the break of the chromosome, though, can be highly variable. And that means that the expression of this disorder is highly variable. The break could involve a interstitial, so a region in the middle of that short arm, or it could be a terminal deletion, uh, a short terminal deletion or a longer terminal deletion. And you can see exhibited in the sections in red over here that uh, mental retardation is a large component of Cri du Chat, but if the break is more terminal, then there will be less mental retardation. And so um, that is a feature that's highly variable in the expression of Cri du Chat. The symptoms, of course, we are missing a portion, so we have half as much gene product are due to haploinsufficiency. And one of the interesting things about Cri du Chat is that it is due uh, not necessarily to a hereditary condition. Indeed, it's a genetic disorder, but this arises de novo 90% of the time. So it's the first incidence that is seen of it. Um, and uh, the incidence is fairly infrequent relative to the trisomies that we've looked at previously. Here are some of the symptoms. We have hypertelorism, hyper meaning over or larger space between the eyes or a large bridge of the nose. Another feature is epicanthus. Um, in this picture, you can see the epicanthal folds are marked. Um, which is the normal epicanthal fold that we see in uh, some individuals, uh, not all individuals, but here we're talking about epicanthus, which is the um, vertical fold that you see on either side of the bridge of the nose. And you can see it in each of these images. So epicanthus, the condition, is having this vertical fold on either side of the uh, bridge of the nose, so an extra fold. Uh, another significant feature is retrognatha, which is a, a short, a smaller and receding chin. So, um, Cri du Chat, uh, here's a sequence of images of development of Cri du Chat, pretty classical uh, representation um, from a four-year-old, nine-year-old, and 12-year-old, same individual traced through life. Uh, so you can see um, the general features of this syndrome.